Interesting. <clears throat> Speaking of interesting, I've heard that Robert Downey Jr. has uh, come back as um, Doctor Doom. So I've heard. You know, now that I think about it, I should make a video about it. Here, hold this. I'll be right back. Ah, right. So, yeah, I honestly didn't see this coming. So, pardon me. As it turns out, Robert Downey Jr. is going to return playing a different character, Doctor Doom. Years after his previous character, Tony Stark, had passed on after his sacrifice in Avengers Endgame. And what is my response to Robert Downey Jr.'s reveal as Doctor Doom? Well, that depends if you want the short version or the long version. Here's the short version. I don't care. Bye. Okay, okay. You're clearly here for the long version. So, here's the long version. I don't care about this announcement. I don't. And that's kind of a sad thing to say, but I don't care. The MCU phases one to three had such a brilliant reputation for having a brilliant overarching story with great characters and a brilliant climax in Endgame, even if it had some flaws here and there. Unfortunately, phases four and five have not lived up to that kind of expectation and reputation because phases four and five have failed to establish any kind of concrete overarching story, and they failed to give us new relatable characters in the same way the previous ones were. Not to mention the double standards affiliated with their overt woke agenda. For example, in Captain Falcon and Winter Soldier, it was not okay for the American government to do something rather shady. However, in Black Panther Wakanda Forever, Wakanda gets to get away with the exact same thing the American government did because it's okay if the oppressed people do it. Yeah, you get those double standards everywhere throughout phases four and five. It's pretty ridiculous. Not to mention the way they've completely jeopardized the reputation of certain characters like Matthew Murdock and Kingpin and all kinds of stuff, and all kinds of plot points that completely contradicts what came before. And don't get me started on Love and Thunder! I mean, there have been a few successes here and there with No Way Home and uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. They have failed to create an investing project, and they have lost so much money from not succeeding for the reasons I've just explained. And as of recording this, I had recently seen the Deadpool and Wolverine movie. And if you want more of my thoughts on that, go watch the live stream I made with my friends Winning Charlie and Squid Bear. To make a long story short, we all had a wide variety of opinions. Winning Charlie was the most positive. Squid Bear was the most negative. I was somewhere in between. My opinion to this day is, your expectations on the Deadpool and Wolverine movie will highly depend on what you're expecting going in. If you're expecting some grand X-Men movie of some kind or something along that caliber, you're likely to be disappointed. But if you're expecting a Deadpool movie first and foremost that happens to have Wolverine in it and has a lot of cameos in it, you'll get what you came for. And I am just so, so grateful to God that Ryan Reynolds has finally called out Marvel, Modern Disney, and the woke mob overtly in the Deadpool and Wolverine movie. It's about time Ryan Reynolds called out these modern corporate schlucks for their corporate practices, because it's very clear that classic Disney and a lot of what came before in Marvel is capable of good quality storytelling. Version of modern Marvel and modern Disney now they're taking what was good from the past, and now they're just having lazy attempts to corporatize things to try to make the most money possible, but because the stories come out so lazy, and because of the double standards of the woke messaging, because of the overall lackluster quality compared to what came before, it's no wonder so many people have completely ditched the MCU now. But getting Robert Downey Jr. back is clearly an act of desperation. Come on, let's all be blatantly honest about that. But with that said, I've heard some people say, well, this could lead to previous characters giving closure by having a big grand sacrifice, 
similar to what Tony Stark did. Perhaps this could be the chance of having some kind of a story reboot where you could work your characters from the ground up again and have kind of some kind of investing story with Doctor Doom. Although I have heard complaints that uh, Robert Downey Jr. is being inserted into the role of a Romanian character. But knowing Robert Downey Jr.'s acting career, he's portrayed an African-American man in the past in Tropic Thunder. So clearly if the makeup department is that talented enough, and if Robert Downey Jr. is clearly that good of an actor to the point of winning Best Supporting Actor in Oppenheimer last year, then... It's entirely possible to have Robert Downey Jr. have the right makeup and the right acting ability to pull off some Romanian villain. In fact, correct me if I'm wrong, Marvel fans, but wasn't Doctor Doom disfigured anyway? Ah, they'll probably have flashback scenes or something like that. So, given the nature of the MCU, Deadpool and by all extents and purposes, Ryan Reynolds has every right to mock the ever-loving daylights out of the failure of the multiverse concept, the utter snowflake mentality of the woke mob, which is so grateful that it's overtly called out, finally, and overtly calling out the fact that even he and some other characters have said that Wolverine's coming in at a low point in the MCU, like, wow. They are this blatantly honest about their own reputation. Like, even they themselves are aware, yeah, we're not as good as we used to be. <laughs> I mean, you don't say. I'm, as of recording this, I am watching the Daredevil series for the first time ever in my spare time. And seeing that television show compared to the schlock of some of the Disney Plus shows we have now, it's like day and night. I mean, the writing used to be so brilliantly good. I mean, they used to rely so much on visual storytelling, as well as having the time to develop characters in a way that made sense for the plot. But now it's just constant key jangling. What were you upset about earlier? I don't know. I don't remember. Me neither, but this is amazing. To conclude this topic on this video, I guess only time will tell, but I've already said, dated it in the past, I'm pretty much done with full-on investment with the MCU. What the future will hold? Well, God only knows. All right, Scott Slicker signing out. <laughs> ah, cheers, thanks for holding that for me. Um, what did, what would you say about the current reputation of the Marvel Cinematic Universe as it is? Everyone thinks they'll be the one to defeat me. But no one's escaped me yet. Okay, that seems kind of vague and cryptic, but um, you must got a high reputation to make a statement like that. <laughs> RDJ! RDJ! RDJ, rock this power!